Welcome everyone to today's Learn On webinar, Helping Parents Navigate Fluency. Our Learn On webinars have been a team effort. On this slide, you can see all of the amazing people who have put forth effort and knowledge and expertise in creating our Learn On page and our webinar series. My name is Des Arnold. I am a literacy staff developer for training and consultation in Ed Services. My information is highlighted on this slide. Feel free to email me with any questions that you might have regarding this webinar or any literacy related questions you have during the COVID shutdown. I'm sure by now a lot of you have attended our webinars, so I'm going to just go through our meeting norms real quick. Your chat microphone and camera have been disabled due to the large size of the groups. If you have questions, you can post them in the Q&A, but your questions and responses will be visible to everyone. If you have something that you need to say, please raise your hand so that we can unmute your microphone. At the end of the presentation, there will be a link for your Act 48 credits. Make sure that you complete that form. The Act 48 bit.ly will be shared at the end of the presentation. Um, you will need your PPID in order to receive Act 48 credits. These webinars are open to everyone, um, parents, educators in Pennsylvania, educators from other states. We welcome everybody, but you can only receive Act 48 credits if you are a Pennsylvania educator. There will also be a link for the webinar archives where you can go back and review webinars that were created previously. And don't forget to visit our resource site, learnon.iu12.org. While we're learning online, we wanna make sure that we are changing our expectations. Be aware of your continuity of education. Are you doing planned instruction? Are you doing review and enrichment? Are you doing a combination of them? These can be found in your school district's continuity of education plan. Um, also FAPE, free appropriate public education. This applies to all students. A lot of times we believe that this is just for students with disabilities but this applies to all students receiving public education and includes a student's ability to do school online, um, which includes both devices and internet access. Remember that less is more. Prioritize and balance the content that you're giving your students and don't forget to prioritize and balance your workload and home life as well. We want to make sure that we are showing our faces to our students. Um, as a matter of fact, let me turn on my video real quick and say hi so that you guys can all see my face. Um, I have been having some internet problems, so I am not going to leave my video playing due to bandwidth itch issues, but I do want you all to see my face in real life, not the lovely headshot that is my profile picture. This is important to the social emotional learning of our students. When making videos, limit the length. You don't want to send a video to a student to watch that's more than six minutes. Be clear in your objectives and expectations. And in the amount of time you want students to take to complete the task. Make sure your instructions are organized and sequential. And for more information, um, you can visit the bit.ly at the bottom of the screen um, for the Learn On Best Practices. And that can be reached from learnon.iu12.org as well. 
So this is going to be a short presentation today. We only have two outcomes. Participants will consider how to support parents implementing fluency strategies at home. And participants will explore tools to support the review of fluency skills. As educators, we all have a definition for fluency. Fluency is defined as the ability to read with speed, accuracy, and proper expression. In order to understand what students read, they must be able to read fluently, whether they are reading aloud or silently. When reading aloud, fluent readers read in phrases and add annotation appropriately. Their reading is smooth and has expression. As we know, fluency is in, inter, integral to the reading process. We want our parents to know this as well. The true meaning of fluency is often misunderstood, which affects both the teaching and learning of reading. Fluency has evolved to be known as, this, as speed reading by many teachers, students, and parents, which is not the true intent of fluency. It's very important for educators and parents to understand that reading fluency is a vehicle for reading comprehension. The focus of speed during reading should not be emphasized. The ultimate goal of reading is to make meaning and comprehend what is read, not how fast it was read. It is very important for children to receive fluency instruction through a variety of strategies. When students are able to practice fluent reading, they become better readers. Fluency is crucial to reading development of children. Sorry. So when we talk to parents about fluency, we want them to know that it's the ability to read with sufficient speed while supporting understanding. This includes automatic word recognition, accurate word recognition, and the use of expression. When we talk about fluency with our parents and our students, we do not want to emphasize speed. We know as educators why fluency is important. It's the bridge between word recognition and comprehension. Children who do not read with fluency sound choppy and awkward. Those students may have difficulty with decoding skills or they may just need more practice with speed and smoothness in reading. Fluency is also important for motivation. Children who find reading laborious tend not to want to read. As readers head into upper elementary grades, fluency becomes increasingly important. The volume of reading required in upper elementary years escalates dramatically. Students whose reading is slow and labored will have trouble meeting the reading demands of their grade level. When we talk to parents about fluency, about reading in general, we wanna emphasize the importance of reading choice for students. Reading a book that is, quote, on level is not always important. Allowing students to read books that are easier to read will build fluency, build word recognition, and therefore build comprehension. We need to stress with our parents to allow students to read the books that they want to read, even if we feel like those books are not on level. What are some things that parents can do at home to facilitate fluency instruction? Student adult reading. In student adult reading, the student, the student reads one-on-one -on -one with an adult. The adult can be you, a parent, anybody in the house, a sibling. The adult would read the text first, providing the children with a model for fluent reading. Then the student reads the same passage to the adult. The adult would provide assistance and encouragement as needed. Repeated readings are very important for building fluency. In a repeated reading, a student reads the same passage repeated, repeatedly. This is a skill that I use at home with my daughter frequently. She reads a book, 
and then she rereads the book and then she rereads the book. By the time she's done rereading the book, she has excellent fluency and doesn't even realize what has happened. This is a great tool for parents to use at home. Tape assisted readings. I know in this day and age, nobody really uses tapes anymore. However, there are a variety of websites that are free right now for students to listen to read alouds. <clears throat> these, some of these websites um, show the text as it is being read and others just allow you to listen to the story. Um, tape assisted readings or read alouds are an excellent way for students to hear modeled fluent reading. Record the reading is another fun one to do at home. After a student has practiced reading a passage, the parent can allow them to record it using a uh, recording device on a cell phone or device. Once it's recorded, the child can listen to his or her reading and follow along in the book. Poetry is another excellent tool for parents to use at home. There are lots of poetry websites available online um, for, for parents to read with their students. Some tools that parents can use to facilitate fluency instruction at home. Florida Center for Reading Research has student center activities um, for each of the big five, and they do have fluency activities in the K-1, 2, 3, and 4, 5 grade bands. These are tools that can be printed off at home in the form of games. Reading to build fluency. Here are some of the websites I was telling you about for read alouds. Storyline Online is a very fun website where celebrities are reading some um, different books that range in grade level. I saw some even for upper elementary and there are some well-known celebrities and some lesser known celebrities. But again, I will say as, um, as a parent, my daughter has very much enjoyed this website and she's in fifth grade. Flyleaf Publishing is a website that normally requires a subscription, but is offering free decodable texts during the COVID shutdown. These are excellent in reinforcing phonics skills because you can choose decodable texts based on the phonics skill that you are working on. And we know that when we are bridging our word recognition and comprehension, we want to use connected texts. And Scholastic Learn at Home um, is another excellent resource right now um, that is free through the COVID shutdown. This resource also has a variety of um, reading resources in various grade bands. Um, I believe it goes from kindergarten through middle school. I don't, I don't remember the exact grade that it, it stops at. How can you share this information with parents? During your office hours that are either online or on the phone, you can share these resources. On whatever virtual platform you are using for your remote learning, um, some teachers are using Google Classroom, others are using apps like Class Dojo or Seesaw. These are um, platforms in which you can share the links that I've shared with you today. Um, you can also print paper copies of the student center activities from FCRR, and you can send them home to families. With that being said, I know that a lot of people right now are concerned with the amount of time um, that germs can live on paper. And I would not personally recommend sending paper copies home. But I know for some of our younger students, 
that is what, um, what is being done. Paper copies are being sent home as packets. So if that is your option, the FCRR student center activities are a great resource to send home for families to use. So those are the resources and tips that I have for communicating with parents about um, facilitating fluency instruction at home. Here is my contact information, along with all of our literacy tax staff developers. Feel free to email any of us if you have questions. You can also see my Zoom room link. Feel free if you have any questions that don't get answered in this webinar to pop over to my Zoom room um, once this webinar is complete and um, ask all of the questions that you might have. If you do have any questions about facilitating fluency instruction um, with parents at home, feel free to pop them up in the Q&A box now so that we can go ahead and get them answered. We do have about 10 minutes left to answer questions if there are any. While we're waiting to see if there are any more questions, don't forget to go to our Learn On website, learnon.iu12.org, for a full list and schedule of the webinars and office hours coming up with our educational team. Don't forget to click on the Act 48 link that's in the chat, chat box right now to claim your Act 48 hours. And also there is a link for the evaluation. We appreciate all of your feedback during um, this time. And if you could click on that and let us know how this webinar went for you, we would greatly appreciate it. Just to let you guys know, this is Corinne uh, Connor, and I am having office hours at 11 o'clock um, in my Zoom room. I can post the link to it if you aren't sure. And if you have any other questions that maybe um, pop up that you did not think of um, in between now and then, um, please feel free to come to office hours and ask away. Thanks. <laughs>